Good evening. Good evening. Today is the second Sunday of Lent. The readings can be found in today's Mass program. This Mass is celebrated for Michael Bellabo. Announcements. We will have a day of adoration every Wednesday during Lent from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Whether you stay for 15 minutes or an hour, please come and pray. Stations of the Cross will be held every Friday during Lent at 6.30 p.m. This Sunday, February 28th, our video series on pivotal players in the Catholic Church will feature St. Thomas Aquinas. Please come and join us in the parish hall from 3 to 4 p.m. Attendance will be limited to allow for social distancing. We so far have raised $18,100 towards our 2021 Partners and Charity Goal of $22,500. We are getting close. If you have not yet donated and are able to help, envelopes are available at the church entrances or visit the parish website to donate online. Our Lenten fish fry will be a little different this year. The Knights of Columbus will be selling tickets for an order of fish and chips at Conrad's. The tickets are $16 each and can be purchased by cash or check after most masses during Lent from an ex member. Thank you. Our Lenten guest homeless tonight is Deacon Court Shields. Deacon Court received the Sacrament of Holy Orders on June 13, 2009. He was ordained a deacon by Most Reverend Bishop Robert J. McManus, the Bishop of Worcester. Deacon Shields is currently the deacon at Holy Trinity Parish, serving the communities of Bolton and Harper. He has written a book, Homilies from the Heart, and composed a CD, More Homilies from the Heart. Deacon Shields is the chaplain for firefighters at EM and EMTs at the town of Berlin and a member of St. John Paul II Knights of Columbus Council in Bolton and Harvard. His love and passion are his beloved wife, Mary Ellen, of 21 years, his three children and five grandchildren, and in serving God's people, praying to see the divine in the heart of humanity. Welcome to our parish, Deacon. Please stand and greet yourselves. Son, 
Be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your words, that with spiritual sight may pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn. Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord.
transform ourselves into the men and women that God created you and me to be. In Genesis, the first words that God says to Abram, which was his name before God changed it to Abraham, was, I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you. Your descendants will be as great as the stars in the sky, as the sands in the seashore. But today, we hear about this test of Abraham, which, frankly, is a story, I think, that tests most of us. Why would a loving, gracious, merciful God order Abraham to sacrifice Isaac? This miracle child, this promise, this cherished gift, it's a bit unsettling, puzzling when you hear it for the first time, maybe when you hear it for the 50th time, <clears throat> unless we focus on the faith of Abraham, who lived nearly 4,000 years ago. God had always made great demands of Abraham, but he had always taken good care of him. And though his wife Sarah, who was 90, and Abraham, 100, thought too old to have a child, God would bless him with this miracle child, Isaac. But we hear today that Abraham, with this heavy heart, prepares to sacrifice Isaac. But yet, in a moment of not understanding, Abraham still chose to trust in God, to be true to his promises. He had to believe that anything, everything, was possible for God. And that God would not let him down, even though Abraham couldn't possibly foresee how things would turn out right. It's like the times when you and I Pray to God for something. And sometimes for a miracle. If we have that faith, just a small amount, we believe that God will answer our prayers, even though we have no idea how he will do so. As we heard Abraham spared from sacrificing Isaac by this heavenly angel Lord that appears. And so Abraham receive the gift of Isaac twice. Like Abraham, you and I are required to make sacrifices like Abraham. We have all faced, or we will face, the inevitability of letting go of something or something precious. A job our health, our love. Like the gift of Isaac, Abraham, and Sarah, everything dear to us is given to us by God. And so I believe the essence of the story, and really all of sacred scripture is, is God good? And will God keep his promises? And the answer is unequivocally, yes. In the Gospel, Jesus leads Peter, James, and John up this mountain. Now, I know he loved all the disciples, but these probably were his favorite three. They were with him in the Transfiguration. They were with him when he raised the daughter of the synagogue official. And they were with him when he knelt in the Garden of Gethsemane. And they were given this glimpse of the real Jesus to help them through the dark days ahead. To instill in them the faith that Abraham was blessed with. And as we heard, what happened at the baptism of Jesus also happened at his transfiguration. The heavens are open, 
and you receive the glimpse of the Holy Trinity, the infrastructure of our faith. And at Gethsemane was one of Christ's darkest moments. Transfiguration was one of his brightest. The change in Christ's appearance is a sign of the transformation that takes place in you and me through the gift of hope and faith and trust and, of course, the sacraments. Unlike the disciples, you would need to experience God. We don't need to climb a mountain. We just need to be attentive to all the times and the places and the people where God enters our lives. Like the disciples, Christ can transform us too into new and dynamic people. Like the disciples, we can experience Christ's holiness and divinity. The holy season of life is a time to experience this personal transformation and transfiguration. To focus like Abraham on the countless blessings of God, even when we're asked to do something outside our comfort zone. And to totally trust in God, even though we have no idea how He will get us through this present event of a crisis. And to trust in St. Paul's message to the Romans. If God is for us, who can be against us? Let us now stand and profess our faith, for we believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not to be, consubstantial the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, he came down. For our sake was crucified and upon the side, he suffered death and was buried. In accordance with the scripture, he has sinned in heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will not know him. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess with baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. Lift up to the Lord some of our prayers and meditations. Our response will be Lord, hear our prayer for the church that our truest selves, beloved daughters and sons of God, may be revealed more and more through our intended observances. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of holy detachment, that as we recognize more fully that our time, knowledge, possessions, and even life itself are gifts from God, we may place these wholeheartedly at the service of God and our neighbor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all whose faith is weak, that, like Abraham, 
God will renew our spirits and guide us to rely upon God in all circumstances that are unclear or about which we lack understanding. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the candidates who are preparing for reception into the church, that they may come to a deeper appreciation of their baptism into Christ's, to Christ's death and resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who assist us through difficult times, that God will renew them and give them strength and guide their words and deeds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Michael Bellabo, that they may rest in God's eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Almighty God, with grace and glory transform our lives. By this prayer, strengthen us to come through the trials of this earthly life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Make holy here for this gift, we pray, 
by setting your spirit upon them like the dewfall. They will become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion. Jesus took bread, giving thanks and broke it. He gave his strength and sight for saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when someone was headed into the chalice once again giving thanks, he gave it to his friends and disciples, saying, Take this, all of you drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the unit and the covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
that show some sign of peace to one another.
the site of security prayer. My church is composed of people like me. I have naked body things. It may friend take my arm. It's used to be filled by health film. It will do great work if I work. To make generous gifts many causes. To find a generous giver. It will bring other people to worship and fellowship. If I invite and bring them. To be a judge of loyalty and love. Of fearlessness and faith. And a judge with a noble spirit. If I do make it until the least same thing. Therefore, with your help, Lord, I shall dedicate myself to the task of being all the things as I want my church to be. Amen. We're always grateful uh, for Mary Ellen and Nicole Court to come to our parish and just show our appreciation for his nourishment of the word among us this evening. Getting this word of God that is very complex and bringing it to everyday language, everyday lives. Thank God for that gift in your life and continue to be and pray for you that the Lord may continue to give you that gift, give it to the spirits that could continue to nourish many to come to him. Let us stand and pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for our long dance while we still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your mighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended, filled with the peace of Christ and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let us go forth and love and serve God and one another. Thanks be to God.